Hello and welcome to Virtual Summit 2020 Cloud Backup Strategies. In this session, we'll discuss several backup strategies and options when it comes to your InterSystems Iris-based application deployments. My name is Mark Belinsky, and I'm the Principal Technology Architect here at InterSystems. I've been at InterSystems for over 20 years and I've spent the majority of my career in architecture deployment and design. During this session, we'll cover some of the various backup options and strategies, along with some third-party alternatives as well. Uh, we'll start with an overview of the different backup types and then cover an example using AWS services. From this session, I hope you come away with an understanding of the various backup types available for InterSystems products. So let's begin with a quick review of the different backup options available in cloud-based deployments. When deploying in cloud, uh, the same general approaches uh, are available for backup that you would typically use in an on-prem deployment. Uh, just the manner in how they are conducted uh, vary a little in, in some scenarios. Uh, starting on the left, we have InterSystems Online Backup Utility, uh, and that's been in the product since its inception. Uh, the online backup utility in Iris creates a separate flat file uh, and of, of all the blocks that have been uh, in use within the database to a separate file. Next, getting into disk or, uh, and LVM snapshots, these are simply point in time representations of the disk and the database that reside on them. It's important to note that a snapshot by itself is not a backup, but rather, as I mentioned, it's a point in time representation that relies on the original disk as a reference. Without that original volume as its reference point, a snapshot is actually worthless. So additional steps are required to create a durable backup. The difference between a disk and an LVM snapshot is simply where the snapshot is created. The disk snapshots, um, the process happens just, the same, just as the name implies at the disk layer. Whereas LVM snapshots, the process is at a layer higher within the operating system and more specifically at the logical volume or the LVM layer. There are third party options to help facilitate any of these options that in most cases is highly recommended because of automation and cataloging capabilities uh, of these third party uh, backup management softwares to provide that, that real enterprise grade backup solution. So let's review what an InterSystems IRIS online backup, backup provides. Uh, the utility relies on creating a separate backup file on disk. This is separate from a, the actual iris.dat file databases and only contains the blocks that contain actual data. Within online backup, there are four different backup modes, full, cumulative, incremental, and also an external. The full backup does as it implies, saves a copy of all the in-use data blocks. The cumulative backup saves all the blocks that have changed since the last full backup. This is possible because Iris tracks the blocks that have changed by using what's called an incremental bitmap. The incremental back bitmap saves all the blocks that have changed since the last full backup, regardless if it was a full or a cumulative online backup. And finally, the external backup really isn't a backup itself. However, it's used in conjunction with one of the alternative third-party uh, backup management suites we I mentioned earlier. The benefit to using this is to clear the incremental bitmaps as a full line online backup would and also up, update statuses for things like uh, journal purges. Here we show the examples of all three of the online backup methods. On the left, we, we have the purple boxes representing all the in-use database blocks being saved to the backup file. Next in the middle, we have an incremental backup that shows only the blue boxes representing only the blocks that have changed since the last backup being saved to the actual backup file. And on the right, we have a cumulative backup that is showing both the blue and orange boxes representing all the blocks that have changed since the last full backup uh, being saved to the backup file. All backup methods uh, of online backup inherit appropriate measures to support a clean backup with concurrent user activity, supporting a true 24, 24 by seven operation uh, without outage during the backup. Uh, for example, um, if you have some file storage uh, in, a, say, AWS, uh, an EFS or an Elastic File System, or Azure Files, uh, using it mounted by either NFS, uh, Samba, or a SIFS mount uh, can be a good target for these backups. 
Although the online backup is a reliable method for backup, it generally is not recommended for very large systems that are multiple, multiple terabytes in size because the restore process is actually much slower than other backup methods. So we love our online tool, but it does have its limitations. Now let's discuss cloud disk snapshots. Uh, using AWS in this example, here we can have one or more AWS EBS volumes. In order to create an application consistent backup prior to initi initiating an EBS snapshot, it's important to call out to our external freeze API so that the database iris.dat files are not being written to at the time of the actual EBS snapshot. Once the snapshot is created, you then want to call our external thaw API so that database updates accumulated in memory can resume being written to the iris.dat database files. Once the snapshot is created, the database updates have resumed, then you want to make that snapshot into an actual backup because again, a snapshot alone is not an actual backup. Uh, usually this will be pushed into AWS S3 and possibly having a lifecycle policy to push the backup to longer term archives such as S3 Glacier or if your backup policy uh, requires something different. On the previous slide, I provided a general overview of the process. However, there's some specifics to be aware of. For example, if using Windows, compute instances or virtual machines, Iris provides direct support for Windows Volume Shadow Copy Services, or, or VSS for short. With VSS support, you can easily leverage AWS Backup or Azure Backup natively and achieve application consistent backups without any further actions required. However, for Linux, achieving that same application consistency, some additional steps are required. On the previous slide, I mentioned the freeze and thaw APIs. These are required when using disk snapshots with Linux-based Linux instances or virtual machines. We have also worked with Microsoft Azure Storage team to help simplify this process. I have listed here a URL to an article on our developer community. My apologies for being a little uh, so small and hard to read potentially, but uh, if you have any questions, I could certainly point you to that. Um, but you can also simply search on our community and search for Azure Backup and it'll be easily uh, found. One thing I mentioned is cloud providers are rapidly evolving, especially in the backup arena. Uh, this is a known part of cloud-based deployments that isn't as efficient as it should or could be, uh, but things are rapidly changing. So be sure to regular, regular check with your cloud providers uh, on their current cap capabilities for backups. One other thing I want to mention is when you have a federated deployment with multiple instances of viruses, uh, such as our sharded cluster that collectively together make up the entire system. Uh, there's a specific API to do coordination of all the shard nodes so that you get a true point in time backup across all the shard nodes at the same time. Um, I'll provide a link to this API at the end of the session. LVM snapshots in Linux are like disk snapshots in that they create only a point in time representation and again, not an actual backup. The biggest difference is the snapshot is created and present within the VM or compute instance itself. Once the LVM snapshot is created, you can do whatever backup process you want. You can have them copy off to uh, an EFS volume or a file share or push to an S3 bucket or object storage or even to longer term uh, archival storage such as S3 Glacier. Having a file system or LVM based snapshot has some significant benefits. For example, you can do a selective backup on selective files and also restores uh, selectively as well. And also leverage any traditional backup management software tools that deploy uh, an in-house agent. Um, there are numerous possibilities, uh, so you could certainly look into using any of your favorite or, uh, backup management software. Some additional benefits uh, to LVM or file system snapshots. Uh, as I mentioned, there's immediate file level access and, and local storage such as uh, those available with NVMe SSDs uh, can be used for very fast and, and actually low, co low cost backup destination. Be sure to offload the actual persistent storage to an object or a file storage uh, so you can have the long term true persistence. The benefit to having the LVM snapshot backup first go to a local NVMe is that so you can also run a very fast database integrity checks 
and benefit from the NVMe SSD throughput capabilities and the ultra low latencies uh, that are usually in, in the microseconds. Um, and it also uh, doesn't count against uh, storage IO uh, thresholds or, or limits that might be imposed. So the local SSDs are, are free range and open to doing as much as the physical device will allow, usually up into hundreds of thousands of IOPS. Uh, I, I, I want to again mention that just like disk snapshots, LVM snapshots require the use of the freeze and thaw API so you get that clean application consistent backup. So far we've discussed uh, native backup options uh, that are in the cloud and honestly uh, they're usually the most used. However, I see benefits in using a proper enterprise grade backup solution. Uh, this is especially my belief when your organization is, is solely cloud based or migrating in that direction. Uh, the features and capabilities that are available in third party solutions makes data protection, cloning for production, cloning of production environments for non production use and data recovery a much more robust service and in many cases saves money by more efficiently using storage and different storage tiers. Um, here are just some of the more common solutions we are we see customers using today. Uh, the cloud providers are really closing the gap uh, on these third party uh, backup management solutions, uh, so certainly don't discount them, but there's constant innovation in this area. So now getting into some other considerations, uh, considering your RTO and your RPOs, your, your recovery time objectives and your recovery point objectives. Um, but regular backups are great, um, but it, it really only protects you up to a point and understanding what your actual business requirements are is, is actually crucial and important. So we covered a lot of backup options and, and looping it all together for a complete strategy and accounting for the RTOs and your RPOs usually defined by the business unit uh, or, or the user base themselves. Uh, this will determine how long is acceptable to, uh, to return the system to service and how much data loss is acceptable, if any, uh, in the event of a recovery from, from backup. Uh, the, this RTO and RPO uh, definition covers a lot of areas so you won't we won't be getting into uh, high availability designs and using options such as database mirroring but but let's assume that you either don't have mirroring set up <clears throat> or you lost both failover members and, and you don't have dr for whatever reason and, and we're solely relying on a backup restore process with that in mind backup is typically created nightly and in, in some cases customers may do several backups in a day, whether it's every 12 hours or, or maybe every six hours. Um, but there's still data gap between when the database backup was taken up until the point of failure. Uh, and, and, and this could realistically be up to you know, just under 24 hours uh, since the last backup was taken. To address that, it, it's recommended to have a different backup job or policies defined that will also back up your transaction journal files and, uh, and disks at a high, higher frequency, such as hourly, or even every 15 minutes or five minutes, whatever your RPO and RTO objectives are. This will be all be defined by the business unit themselves uh, or, or at a corporate level as well. Uh, this will allow you to restore, restore the last backup uh, to the last point in time in the backup, which could be again up to 24 hours, but then restore the transaction journal files up to the point of the most recent or up at least until the point of failure. This allows for protecting again what I called you know, the backup gap. So it's important to have two different policies, one for your databases and one for your journals uh, because they will have different requirements and needs. Here's an example um, uh, of what we use uh, uh, using uh, AWS backup plans uh, to a vault. So basically we create a, a vault and a backup plan that is on an interval uh, as the standard way to back up uh, by a tag value, but it does not include the freeze. Um, but it must be, but this must exist, this backup plan must exist to be able to call it programmatically. So we don't rely on Azure backup to actually in, invoke and schedule itself. Um, the key point because of this is AWS backup doesn't yet support a way 
um, to call a, a, an in instance or an in VM API or a command to invoke a freeze and thaw as you traditionally would see with other backup softwares or having their pre and post exec script, script capabilities. Um, that is possible if you are using uh, LVM based snapshots and, and some third party, you can leverage that third party backup softwares um, pre and post exec capabilities. But here using AWS backup itself, it doesn't yet provide that. So as far as freeze and thaw, we're using AWS um, system management or SSM to call the freeze and thaw through itself using an OS level driver, like a stub um, script for commands that we want to bake into our EC2 instance. Then using CloudWatch uh, events target to fire off the backup and freeze for each deployment at whatever interval intervals we want uh, for the back uh, for the database and different intervals for the transaction journals. And this is to satisfy the RPO and RTO requirements. So here's a couple links that I put uh, up in here that shows which um, which facilities within AWS uh, that we use and as, as an example in our internal systems. So to review the key takeaways from our session, uh, online backup is available within InterSystems products and provides storage efficient backup options with the cumulative incremental backup options. However, online backup is usually the slowest recovery times of all the options available. This snapshots are our cloud native services and provides for a fast backup and recovery uh, solution. Uh, and they also support uh, the tiering uh, the backup archives to cost effective longer term uh, archive solutions. LVM snapshots uh, are integrated at the uh, at the OS LVM layer or the file system layer. Uh, these are also fast and back backup and recovery. However, they also provide a very fast option for running in place database integrity checks and also allows for easy file level restorations. Each option has their own benefits and use cases and the factors that influence which option to consider is driven by your business units, um, RTO and RPO uh, requirements. So for next steps, uh, consider attending my cloud storage strategy session if you haven't participated in that one already. Uh, here are the documentation links that I mentioned earlier for details on using the different Topics and features we discussed in this session for the freeze and thaw APIs, coordinated backups for sharded clusters, and Windows VSS support. And certainly visit our learning services at learning.intersystems.com for a large array of documentation, training, and instruction, instructional material. Uh, please do stay in contact with me. Uh, you can reach me at Belinsky at intersystems.com uh, or via my LinkedIn page as well. And with that, thank you very much.